Hey guys, welcome back. Reese, Reese and Ben here with Pursuing the Nightly Arts. Today Ben and I thought we'd make a quick video covering some of the weak points and openings in Harness. Uh, we feel it's important to uh, give you guys kind of the rundown of where we're striking and why. Uh, this will give you a good understanding of what to look for in uh, future videos. In uh, this video we're going to show uh, some techniques from the treatises that use joint manipulation to damage the man in armor uh, through his armor. Um, in response to a video uh, by our friend Ian Laspina from uh, Knight Errant. Uh, if you want to check him out, there's a link down here in the description. Uh, we're going to show the articulation differences between Reese's harness, which is floating and uh, basically attached with leather straps, and my harness, which is riveted, that has each individual lane riveted together, uh, creating a little more uh, stiffer joint. And uh, we're going to do some uh, work showing some uh, stuff now. Alright, so Check stick around. Openings of armor are the following. There is the top of the foot, behind the knee, underneath the fault into the upper leg and groin, inside of the elbow, the armpit, the top of the shoulder where the spalder and the cuirass meet. and the face when the visor is opened. There's also the cuff behind the gauntlet, the palm of the hand, underneath the aventail, into the throat, and the ocular and or eye slit in the visor. All right, now Ben and I are demonstrating uh, the protective capabilities of my visor. My visor uh, has a grill ocularia with it to hopefully prevent anything from getting through but uh, in the late medieval period you see the weapons taper to a very fine point for this exact reason to get between armor so here Ben is stabbing the ocularia with his dagger and you see it has no problem getting in about four or five inches into uh, what would be my face this is the demonstrating the same thing as before but now I'm wearing the helmet with the visor on he will uh, demonstrate with the dagger just how far you need to uh, thrust in uh, to reach my eye. Here, he only had to go to about an inch and a half or so to reach my eye. Now, where there's parts of the body that aren't protected by plate, they typically cover with mail. Here, I am thrusting into Ben's armpit and his voiders, his male voiders. So the point is tapered enough to go between the, the rings and doesn't go very far. So this is where structure comes into play in which I need to bring it into either my hip or couch it much like a lance to compress the soft tissue from underneath. This next part will be Ben and I showing our range of motion with our arm harnesses and the level of discomfort at full extension. Alright, here uh, you see Ben is manipulating past the point of my natural range of motion and making it extremely uncomfortable for my elbow. So this way. I found here that okay. manipulating Reese's arm, it didn't take very much effort on my part before he was uh, tapping out. At this point, Reese is manipulating my arm and my arm harness. Even though my arm harness does flex a little beyond my natural flexion of my arm, uh, it does take him a little more effort to actually uh, cause me discomfort. This is a dagger technique. This is for when the opponent has stepped with his left foot for a thrust at your left shoulder from above with a dagger in reverse grip. He has surprised you so you couldn't reach for your dagger, then catch his elbow from below with your right hand and strike his elbow with your left hand from the outside and press down quickly, and step with your left foot inside his left foot, thus you break his arm or throw him as seen in the picture above. 
When Ben and I were working through this technique, we found it was potentially effortless to break the elbow following through with the step. So for safety, we did not follow through with the step. If one has thrust vigorously to the chest and the swords have connected to the outside, then lift his point up strongly with your sword and lift your left foot and kick against his knee, like the picture above. Here, Ben and I try to do the technique. Being that I'm an amputee, this does not work against me, as Ben finds out. So we adapt it to where Ben will use his right leg against my right leg, and I experienced a lot of discomfort. Uh, there is not anything to prevent me from hyperextending my knee. Alright, now I return the favor and do the technique against Ben. So, doing this uh, technique against Ben's knee, it was uh, extremely difficult for me to overextend his knee. Uh, being that he is his lanes from his uh, pull-ins do a very good job of preventing his knee from hyperextending. This next technique comes from Le Jeu de la Hache, which means the play of the axe. This is a treatise that covers the use of the knightly axe, or pole axe, as it's often called. Unfortunately, this treatise does not include illustrations, only text, but the technique calls for the opponent to use his cue end of the axe to drive it between the opponent's legs and use it as a pivot point against the hips. Alright, so once I landed the uh, cue past his legs into towards the ground, uh, I felt I had better leverage behind his knee and getting close to his hip. I could feel it uh, separating my hips and uh, it actually physically caused me to turn my hips. If I had tried to resist, it would have caused joint damage, I'm sure. And uh, in, in the positioning of my hips, I was forced over. It's hot. Yes, it is. Uh, well, guys, thanks for watching, as always. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, give us a like. Let us know down in the comments below. Feel free to share the video. Uh, we had a lot of fun making it. It's, uh, it's quite hot today. Uh, we were kind of uh, a little stupid to start this project <laughs> during the middle of the summer. But, you know, we're called stupid or dedicated. I would just think we're dedicated. Yeah. But uh, what was, uh, what was well, your conclusions? Uh, uh, even with my articulation, some of the joint locks still push my joints to a limit, uh, where it was pretty, pretty painful a little bit. Uh, I could see it full force where you'd cause me some problems for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could feel with your, with your joints, it seemed like I didn't have to pull nearly. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my articulation, uh, there's always advantages and disadvantages with articulation and not no articulation, fully articulation. Uh, with mine, I, I've, I have full range of motion. You know, yeah. doing whatever I need to uh, do. I have limits. He, he has limits, but in this instance with joint manipulation, that's actually a great advantage with him compared to, compared to mine. Yep. Uh, well, that kind of concludes what we we're covering today. Uh, also, uh, check out Ian Laspina's channel, Knight Errant. Again, we have a link in the bottom of the description and everything. Uh, we thank him for giving us a shout out and showing some more stuff on his channel. Uh, we appreciate it very much, and uh, we look forward to uh, possibly doing some more stuff in the future. So, uh, as always, guys, thanks again, and uh, we'll catch you next video. Yep. Have a good one.